Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Rodgon. I am a drawing human being. I like drawing. And today you guys get a chance to venture with me into the world of drawing. So, hello, my good friends. Let me put away my markers and clean up my area a little bit. Probably should have done that before we started streaming, but it doesn't matter. Hello, and hi from the world of tomorrow. Uh, not really. But hello, my friends. How are you guys doing? Boom. Let us draw. Let us learn. And let us have some fun tonight. It's Saturday night. It's party time in this club. So we're going to play some music. And we're going to draw some stuff. And we're going to learn some stuff. And it's going to be an awesome night. How about that? And this morning, we talked a little bit about pinups. So we did a little pinup, and we did a bunch of poses and references studies. So we played a lot with that. That was really fun. So we did some studies on bodies, and then we applied that to a simple body shape to be able to draw something stylish. So what we're going to be doing, are you live every day and night? Um... Not every day. Sometimes I'm not here in the afternoons because I have pool. Um, I play pool. I'm a I'm an eight ball and nine ball player. I'm a hustler. No, I wish I was a hustler. Uh, but I do dabble in the whole element of pool. So I oftentimes this is the other hobby or the other passion that I have. So being able to do both is actually really quite useful. And the way that I control the ball, <laughs> it always makes for a really cool hand position. So it's always really dope to just draw it. Have a glove that covers. This part, but it doesn't cover these two fingers, so it's like right here. Okay. And perspective and depth are very easy to adapt to a pool scene. <laughs> Look how easy that is. <laughs> Adding depth in a pool scene is so easy because everything's angles. Anyways, did you study art? I did study art. I studied animation. So I studied animation, but they didn't teach me animation in the traditional way most of the time. Uh, it was mostly 3D animation that was taught to us. So a lot of the times we didn't really have uh, the lessons that I would have wished I had, which consist of learning how to draw the human body in cool positions and stuff like that. Like we didn't have those type of classes. We had modeling and texturing and rendering and textures and environmental stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I'll get good at that. And then eventually I'll get to do the things I want. And I never really did with my degree, so I never really used it. But I learned a lot of stuff within that. Have you worked in animation or movies? Mm, well, it depends on what type of animation and what type of movies you're talking about. Because I have been hired to animate and I have been hired to do uh, sort of like small like things like that. But never been like a production for like, I don't know, Netflix or something. Okay. I think today we do watercolors. And we need to tape our brown paper to the other side. So I've been liking with this format. I've liked it the half and half. And the way that I do that is very simple. If you buy uh, origami paper, origami paper is really cheap construction paper. And 
It comes in packs of like 100 or whatever. You take one, you use its awesome origami powers to bend it in half. Mm -hmm. Perfectly in half. And then I can put this in my other page in any direction that I feel like. In this case, I think I'm gonna do like a little pin up from the bottom. So I'm going to put the paper down there. So half my page will be brown, but on the bottom. And that's kind of cool. I like that. Good morning from Chula Vista. What? I'm from Chula, oh, I'm really close to Chula Vista. I'm from Tijuana. I'm like super close to you. We should go draw one day. Okay, let me link this up. No, I left a little lip and I can't lift it anymore. Ah, that's gonna bug me. <laughs> Anyways, that's fine. Uh, I'll lock it up a little bit more on this side. Done. Cool. So now we have half a brown paper and half colored paper. Dopeness. How's Moustache? Moustache is great. Moustache is doing amazing. Uh, let's see. So going back and forth with uh, posing and stuff like that has been really fun lately. Because now I can look at anybody's drawings and then I can just replicate the drawing really quickly, like the pose. And it's super cool. Like even if it's the most complicated poses, like now it's just like whatever. Even if it's like super weird posing, like super action-y. <laughs> Let's see, have one in the front. <laughs> it's just really fun to start playing around with shapes and actually having it make sense now. Like, it, it took so long for me to get to the point where I could grasp concepts like depth and perspective easy in order to be able to get a better understanding of style, anatomy. All that stuff comes from understanding perspective a little bit more. Let's see, what is he going to be throwing? Oh, she... Overlap over the shoulders. Are you taking requests? I mean, I can. You guys want to request poses? You guys can request poses. We're just going to be working on posing today. A bowling ball. So throwing a bowling ball. Let's see. Let's see if we can figure it out. So I used to bowl. So your arm goes this way with the bowling ball into your shoulder, into that front leg. Wait, is it the front leg? Yeah, you slide over the front leg. And then you kick back with your other foot. And then you're like hyper focused in the front, so your head's like this way. And then the other arm is gonna be up there. So if you throw the ball, it would be somewhere around here. And then the ball would come out like this. So it would be somewhere along the lines of here. And then the swing can go like all the way from up here. So 
so your arm can go. <laughs> yeah, something like that would be the case with uh, maybe the shirt would be lifting a little bit. A little shadow to ground him. Maybe give the lane a little bit of depth by drawing the little lines. You know, you can build this whole scene relatively easy if you know what you're referencing. And if you know what you're referencing, then you can probably build a scene relatively easy. So my hand would end up up here. You go from the side to up. Okay, so my hand would end up right here. That's it released. Okay, and then we would have his ear, his neck, his face facing forward. And bowlers are not the most fit, so I'm not going to draw a much of a chin. And they tend to be a little bit middle-aged, like me, so I'm just going to draw myself playing bowling. And I'm a decent bowler too, by the way. I think my high score in bowling is uh, 287, 289, one of the two. What was my highest? It's been a while. Effia Noble, we are not taking, oh, you have a lot of followers, but eh, nah, not gonna do anything. Maybe it was a legit one, but I doubt it. It was probably some other, like, annoying influencer just going, Oh, hey, can you, like, draw? Oh, my God. Uh, do you want to play a game? <laughs> like, I fucking hate that, dude. Like, I'm sorry for the people that are younger listening, but, oh, my God, it's so annoying. It is so annoying. <laughs> I do apologize for the language. I have learned that my audience is a lot younger than I think it was. So we have a lot of the kiddos in our streams. And I have to make sure that I set a good example. So we reserve the, the adult talk for situations that call for it. Like bad clients and stuff like that. <laughs> but don't expect me to say things like fudge. <laughs> I ain't doing I ain't doing that. If I'm gonna say a word, I'm gonna say the word. I'm not gonna I've never been good at that. Hello insomniac, how you doing? Oh, KK. How you doing, KK? How you doing? I saw one of my mods pop up. Yo, yo. Glad to have you on board tonight. We're going to listen to some music in a little bit. Uh, I'm just giving you guys a nice little intro, giving you guys a chance to choose what we're going to do tonight. So you guys chose posing. You guys can just start randomly throwing poses into the chat while we play music and I'll be listening and like watching. So I'll choose the ones that I feel like drawing. If I don't choose yours, do not spam over and over or you will get yourself banned, okay? You will get yourself blocked before I even warn you. At nights, I don't necessarily always have my mods, so I don't really have the patience that they do, <laughs> okay? So make sure that you guys are behaving and if there are any sex bots out there, you, you, you harlots, we don't want you. So you guys can go uh, do your thing somewhere else, okay? <laughs> all right. And as of now, all the seven, no, the, all the 21 modules for 
21 draw have been uploaded. I have officially completed my assignment with 21 draw. Dopeness. Soon enough, they will be posting that everywhere. Everywhere. And they're going to be fucking posting that shit everywhere. I promise you that. My face has been everywhere because of them. At the very least, <laughs> at the very least, it's going to be uh, another awesome like marketing thing for me. So I'm perfectly okay with that. So let's start with a little bit of my favorite song. Hey. I hate that when you can't skip the... I hate... Oh, and then you put two of them? You put two ads? YouTube? Two ads? Oh, I'm never going to sign up for that shit. Oh, and then... Oh, ooh, and then you don't let my music play right away? Oh, you motherfucker. The anatomy course is live. Well, it's not live yet. Course. Is the one that I finished. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. The owner says he's out shopping. Thunder me and I'm not stepping. Scotty doesn't know, Scotty doesn't know, Scotty doesn't know, Scotty doesn't know, don't tell Scotty, Scotty doesn't know. I can't believe he's so trusting, while I'm right behind you thrusting, Fiona's got him on the phone, yes he's trying not to moan. It's a two-way call and he knows nothing. No, Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. No, Scotty. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Oh. We'll put on a show. Everyone will go. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Oh. Parking lot, why not? It's so cool when you're on top. And I'm not in the top. And then they don't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. I did it on his birthday. Scotty doesn't know. 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 Don't tell Scotty. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty will know. Hopeless pose. A hopeless pose. Okay. That sounds pretty fun. Okay, so what I want you guys to remember, it's going to be a simple, simple song, okay? We're going to make a song. We're going to make a song and how to build a face and how, how to build a body. I'm going to build a song and you're never going to forget the song because it's going to be so ridiculously stupid. Okay, so let's come up with a song. We'll come up with like, miss, would it be like an old McDonald thing? Okay, so let's come up with a song that's rhythmic and easy to remember. The body starts by drawing something simple like an egg. And then you draw a compass to come up with the shoulder space. And then you go one arm, and then you one arm, and then you know another, and another. And then you add the volume inside, and now you have some arms. Yay! <laughs> a cylinder is what is next. You draw it for a head. And you can move it around anywhere you please. Ah, I got stuck. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I don't like the old McDonald one. That's, that's too, uh, that's too uh, young. So, let's see. Hold on. So, we have, we have to come up with a song with an egg. Right? With a compass and a cylinder. Because that gives us an upper body. Really, really easy. Ta da Yay! 
And then we can move that anywhere we want. Boop, ba -doop, ba -doop. We want them dancing. Da, 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 da. We want them like boogieing. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Want to do like the Squidward dance? Mm, mm. So you can do anything you want as long as you understand where your body parts come from. So that is literally the easiest way to draw yourself a body. An egg into a circle, into a compass. And now you have yourself a rib cage that's easy to draw from here. That's where your arms come out from. And then from here to the middle of your rib cage, you draw you, and now you have pectoral muscles. Woohoo! Now you have pecs. From these two, this little curve develops, just draw a circle. And now you have a cylinder, ability to draw cylinders, because cylinders are really easy to draw because you can just connect two circles at the edge and you have a cylinder. That's why they're so easy to move in space. If you make them the same size, they stay on the same plane. If you make one bigger and you keep the other ones the same, you start getting overlapping shapes. Ta-da! And that is the initial senses of foreshortening. <laughs> when one completely overlaps the other, you end up having to draw through your shape so you can figure out where the other ones go. But a lot of the times you end up not using that, and you use that for like things like hands and arms and stuff like that. And that's when it connects to the body. Look at me, I'm Iron Man. So foreshortening is a very important tool to learn, and it's not really hard to learn. It's just a matter of uh, understanding very basic components in a very easy, understandable way. And But that's the, normally the hard part. The hard part is finding somebody that can teach you that easy. <laughs> but you have me. Andrew Tate knows. Uh, highly, I don't know, man. Like, he might know a lot of things, but I don't think he knows a lot about art. I don't think he probably values it too much. A lot of the... A lot of the, the People that value like just money and crave that stuff in general don't really see art as a valuable tool because it's not something that people actually normally do for money. It's not something that you crave and use for like financial gains much of the time. It's more of the time, more often than not, it's more just a release for us, you know? It's like we get to actually like finally put something in like into the world, show a little bit of love, a little bit of kindness. You know, like we, we normally don't have ill intentions with what we do. And unfortunately, in order to make a lot of money with art, you tend to have to take advantage of a lot of people. So that's why, you know, it's something I don't really necessarily want to pursue. Like I don't want to build a studio because it takes a lot of, a lot of cheap labor from a lot of people to be able to build that. And unfortunately, I don't feel like underpaying or ever like cutting people like, you know, like money that I don't have to be able to build a fortune in the hopes that I can pay them later. You know, I, I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want to be that person. And I'll never be that person. So I'm going to do everything on myself. Anything, everything I ever do will be by myself because I know that I can rely on me. And then I can just do as much as I can within the limits of what I can achieve. And that is how it is. Is art good for a job? I'm in high school. You want to do art and music. You want to do the two things that are either making you going to make you incredibly successfully rich or incredibly poor but happy. <laughs> Those are the two jobs. Like you can either be incredibly like wealthy when it comes down to artwork because, you know, you meet famous people, rich people. You like hit it off. You get commissions. You get like royalties of something, whatever. You know, that is the one element of art that's really cool. But not a lot of people do that. Not a lot of people get there. So a lot of the times, it's the dream of getting there that kind of maintains you, you most of your career. And then you just kind of like have to like make yourself happy with what you do achieve, what you do accomplish. Right? There's the pipe dream. There's some people that have a pipe dream of doing something very specific. And then people that just go with the flow like me. Like, I don't, I didn't ever had a dream, like a specific goal in mind. But, you know, you end up in situations where your skills allow you the ability to be able to, to do things that 
would have been considered really cool. But maybe you just didn't even know about it. All right, so more music. Uh, I kind of feel like a Mexican rock night. Yeah, I kind of feel like that because I'm going to go out with my buddy tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go out with my buddy. We're going to uh, party it up a little bit. So we're going to go with some some Mexican rock. Oh, mango. Para llenar este vacío. Ándale, mango. Boom, boom. Maria, Maria, you remind me of a West Side story. Growing up in Spanish, her love. Living the life just like a movie star. Maria, Maria. Love and Mistelle. Doing the sound of a guitar, yeah. Playing by Carlos Santana. Looting, stop the shooting, pickpocketing on my corner. Then the rich is getting richer, the poor is getting poorer. The Bel Maria on the corner, thinking of ways to make it better. Reminds me of a one such story Growing up in Spanish Harlem mm-hmm. Living the life just like a movie star Oh, Maria, Maria oh, 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 oh. The love is still Maria, you know you're my lover. In the windows, I can kill you through the weather. And even when we are apart, we feel as well back together. Maria, yeah. You remind me of a West Side story. Growing up in Spanish Harlem. Living the life just like a movie star Find the love in East LA And found it on guitar Played by Carlos Santana Yo 
making the guitar cry. Maria, you know you're my lover. Siente el palpitar de la I can feel you through the weather. Al volante de un Alfa Romeo. Es cura. When repositioning arms, do I need to change the orientation of the compass? Ooh, good question. So, when you're like having your arms in different directions, your compass changes. So, let's say that you have your arms... Hold on. This is important. Santana, you need to stop. Okay, so... Boop, 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 boop. So, now, if you're drawing a compass for the head, for the body, there's going to be three situations that you have it in. One of them is going to be just your standard one that's going to be like a normal compass pointing to the middle. And that's going to be your average arm. You draw from this point down and then you add volume inside. Then you have your hand. The connecting point is going to give you a little circle. You can use that to reposition your arm slightly if you want. Any way you want. Okay. You can use that to like come up with where your arm connects if you overlap it. Or once you find that circle, you can start using that to be able to come up with different body positions, right? Once you find that circle, it's very easy. So that's one. If you need your arms up, those two little spikies go up. And they're from the front and the back of that little circle. So you connect them back to that space. That, bringing it back to your rib cage gives you a nice big wide oval that you can use to reposition your arms going up. Kobe. Okay, so that is something that you can do. And remember, if you want to move your arms up, that moves up. And there's also a low position, like in this one, where the shoulders are pointing slightly down. And that gives you more of a slouching position for your arms. So if you want to have somebody slouching, these points go down. So those are the three positions that you have for your collarbone. Does it sometimes hurt when I draw so small? Not really. It actually helps me because I don't have to move my hand too much. And then when I need to do something bigger, I just scan this and take a picture of it. And that is how I get cool poses really quickly. Circle, sushi, or a circle with two little horns coming out of the edges. into an egg with a compass. And that is literally the only way that I see bodies now. And it's the easiest, most dynamic way that I have ever drawn bodies. It's just quite intuitive, for me at least. Love this, how about the leg positioning compared to the pelvis? Well, we haven't even talked about the body, like the lower body. On the lower body, you get what is called a sushi. So that's the upper body, right? Upper. So the upper body is an egg with a compass. That's pretty cool, and a cylinder. And that's that's your lower upper body. Ta-da! You can draw bodies from there. Your lower body is a sushi. A su not a sushi, a sushi. A sushi is called a sushi because you start with a sphere, you draw two circles to create depth and a belly button. And then the two connecting points and the eye and the sides of the actual sphere are going to give you the edges of your legs. You draw the outside edge of your leg and then you draw volume inside. Outside edge, volume inside. The connecting point is now your hip bone. Those two circles, those two points create a circle and now you have a hip bone. The hip bone can easily control the leg by drawing from that top point, the outside, into inside volume and connecting it back to that circle. Outside, inside volume. Ta-da! 
Ta-da. 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 So anything that you want to do with this is now based on that connecting point. And that is as easy as just splitting a sphere into four, drawing two circles from those two side points, and giving yourself a little bit of space for your goodies. From there, any leg shape will be from this point out. You can draw a stick figure if you want. And then give volume to the inside. Always volume inside. Outside edge, volume inside. Outside edge, volume inside. Outside edge, volume inside. Okay, so if you do that, if you remember that, and then you add your egg at the top, you end up in a position where you can draw poses. Relatively easy. So that's something you can keep in mind. Uh. Will shading come naturally when you learn to see perspective? Yes. I can tell you why almost immediately. So, let's say that you have a sphere, right? If you have a light source right here, if you're shading it, if you don't know any perspective, you'll probably just add some shadows and do this. And it's going to look cute. It's going to look cute. It's going to look adorable. But if you know perspective, you will be able to grid this. You'll be able to determine how much of the light you want to show. You'll be able to set up spacing for your bounce light. You'll be able to determine how to make that shadow come into space. Right? You can do it intuitively or you can do it academically, but academically is the only way that you're going to really get that super finished, realistic look that you really want from some, some people that do shadows and stuff. You know? So that is the difference. If you learn with perspective, you can grid things better. How do you draw heads in different angles? Well, when you draw them from a cylinder, it's really easy. If you draw a cylinder or a noodle, these lines already, these little circles, are already my jaw. They go around. So I just have to draw a line down my ear, and I have a face. And I can choose whatever angle, even the difficult ones, really easy. So if I want to choose the different, I just draw a cylinder again, change the size of the circles inside, and that's going to give me a different perspective. So all I got to do is change the size of the circles inside. And now I have a different view. <laughs> so that's how I would go about it. The cylinder is a much stronger head shape than a circle and a sphere. Mostly because that's how her structure is built. <laughs> Adding an ear gives you a jaw. <laughs> it's the easiest thing ever. <laughs> okay, so the ear in the back. The head in the back is just a cylinder again. There's no difference between the front and the back. And in the back, you just have a brain pocket. And then you have your ear from behind. Your neck connects right here, and there's a split in the middle. Because your muscles connect to the back of your spine like this. 
And then you have your compass at the bottom that gives you access to your side muscles and your spine. Once you find your counterpoints, you just draw a little U towards the bottom and then you determine how wide your little wingies are gonna be. And then you go into your shoulders and stuff like that. But that's more advanced. How can you draw the back of the head like that? Hello, sir. Happy weekend. How do you make a sushi look more feminine? The sushi is not a feminine or a masculine thing. The sushi is just your hip bones. So the sushi is just an easy representation of your actual hip bones and what they do. Okay, this is a very simplified version of learning how to connect the leg onto that actual body. Um, when it comes down to drawing the femininity of it, it's going to be the relationship with the rib cage. So if you make the rib cage smaller, you're going to end up with a curvature. And then if you make the shoulders come out a little bit, you end up with an hourglass shape. So the hourglass is an egg with a compass and a circle in the bottom. The hip bones come from here, and if you put them together, it gives you a nice little semblance of a female body. The arms coming out from here means that you draw the outside edge inside volume. And your head comes from this top. If you make the shoulders a little bit smaller, it's going to look a little bit more feminine. And the moment you add breasts by adding a heart to the compass, because that is the only way to draw boobs, because they make everybody's hearts happier. So you draw a heart coming from your head. And that's a pretty accurate representation for illustrative purposes, at least. So if you're drawing something like a nice little cute pinup, you would draw an egg with a compass into nice white hips into your sushi. You can overlap shapes perfectly well. Your head. And then you choose whatever styling you want to do, like whatever the pose calls for. Let's say like a little sassy pose. Ba -ba. Draw your heart. And then you draw your style, whatever you styling you want. You want bathing suits? We've been doing bathing suits. We can do that. So that's how you would go about doing that. How do you make it look more masculine? Well, you increase the upper body. So this one was the lower body and the smaller rib cage, right? That was uh, this one. Boom, boom. Well, if you do the opposite, you make little hips, but you increase the size of the upper body, you end up with the opposite result. You end up with a character that has a much bigger upper body. Therefore, you have to make it more musculature. There's some more mass, which gives you a much more masculine look. Encourage more people to share the live. It's asking me to ask you guys to share the live. So uh, I don't know. Would you guys want to listen to TikTok? Uh, you guys can share the like if you guys want. Share the stream. It's asking you to. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it won't. Who cares? We haven't played music. Yeah. 
Yeah, we can take requests though, but I'm gonna go into the application section of it. So I'm just gonna draw something cool, like a pinup again or something. Como duele, como duele el corazón, viendo el papel entregado. Duele mi día de ver que un día dirás, ay, 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 como me duele el amor. Ah, 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 corazón espinado. Oh, you get confused how to draw the nose? Uh, the nose is actually really simple. The nose in itself is comes from a triangle, right? So if you draw a triangle on any face, it's going to give you a top and two sides. But as well, if you draw a line straight down, it's going to be a bottom. If you connect this top line, you make it come out as far out as you want, and you connect it back to the bottom, this is going to be the midline of your nose, as in the profile line. So if you were drawing this as a profile, that's the line you're drawing, the very edge, the very middle of your face. Not the outside edge of your nose. No, this is the middle. If you want to give it depth, you got to give it a little bit to this side, a little bit to this side. Okay? By giving it a little bit to this side, a little bit to the other side, you're really creating volume. Okay? So if you don't do that, it's not going to look right. But... Once you get the use of that, you can just do something like this. <laughs> Come up with a true midline, and then you're going to actually be able to draw your noses a lot easier. Because all you have to do is change the way that midline goes. And you can have a bunch of variations to noses that you maybe never would have done if you didn't know that. So when you draw a profile, right, that line just literally becomes the middle of your nose. See what I mean? It's crazy when you do it, I see it come together. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what a teacher is supposed to do. I'm supposed to facilitate this for you guys, right? That is my job. My job is to make things easy for you to understand. Your job is to uh, maybe like this a lot more than maybe 9,000 likes over the span of an hour. <laughs> All you guys have to do is like the stream. Right? That's all you guys have to do. If I'm, if you guys aren't doing that, then I don't technically get any benefit. But I'm not doing it for benefit. So you guys do it at your own leisure. If you guys learn something, click it. If you guys don't learn anything, don't click it. Okay, that's literally it. Don't. don't I don't want anybody to just like the stuff because I didn't. So I, because I'm here. I want you guys to like it because I did something cool. Not because of any sort of obligation. <laughs> two, 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 superhero pose. <laughs> so, okay, so adding volume is important. Oh, of course, volume is everything. Uh, volume is learning volume is one of the most important things in actual like drawing learning how to take a circle and make it into a sphere is one of the most important elements that you can do and the the funny thing is it's really simple all you got to do is draw a circle inside and that gives you depth that gives you volume that gives you a guideline that you can draw across 
in all sorts of directions to find different mapping points like your ears, your jaw, your structures like that. Uh, it lets you split things. It lets you have mapping points so you can make things come out of it at certain angles. You know, like it is what you make it. And the more you practice, the more you can make. If you combine two of them, you can get a bean bag. And the bean bag literally is everything in your body. You can draw fingers, you can draw hands, you can draw arms, you can draw feet from bean bags in every direction. You can draw your body from a bean bag, your arms, your hands, your fingers. Everything can be done with a bean bag. Like so, it's a very strong uh, shape to learn. And we don't hide fingers here. We probably have a glove. How do you draw environments or objects around the body to add more to it? Uh, we can do that in our final piece. So now we can focus on our actual... Um, now that we studied a little bit. Now we're going to use that to draw a cool piece of artwork. Get some coffee. And let's get to it. What should we draw though? Like, should we draw another pinup? That kind of sounds kind of cool. I kind of like drawing ink ladies on every single page. That kind of sounds like an awesome book. That would be pretty pretty cool. Are you doing two a day? I mean, I just hop on here when I'm bored at in the afternoons. So if I'm not doing anything, if I'm not playing pool, if I'm not like going out and about, I just hop on here and I just stream. Um, because I just enjoy sharing my knowledge with you guys. Hope you guys don't mind. <coughs> oh, I know what I'm going to do. I want to work on more complicated poses. But I want more emotion to them, you know? So I got to start playing with storytelling a little bit more. Complicated poses, Rod. Complicated poses. Let's go. We're gonna fucking master this shit. Okay, cool. We have like a, a slightly terrified pose right here going on. I like that. And then we're going to draw something really cute right here. And what should it be?
<laughs> I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Percy Jackson, tu padre necesita tu ayuda. El rayo maestro fue robado. Y si no regresa el rayo, habrá una guerra. Oh no, una guerra. Es tu misión. Gracias por mi misión. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in the landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look out through the skies and see. I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy. Easy go, easy go. Little high, little low. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. To me. Mama. Just kill the man Put a gun against his head Pulled my trigger, now he's dead Mama Life had just begun No, I won't go and throw me all the way Mama Carry on, carry on, cause nothing really matters. Too late, my time has come, sent shivers down my spine, now he's aching all the time. Goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. Gotta leave you all behind and face the truth. Mama. Ooh. I don't want to die. Sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Just a poor boy, nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family, sparing his life with this monstrosity. Will you let me go? Let me go. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia, let me go. Me, i never for a for me, for me, for me. So you think you can stop me in my eyes? So you think you can love me and leave me to die? Oh, baby, can't you just tell me, baby? You 
just wanna get out Just come in right out of here Nothing <laughs> really matters. Anyone can see. Nothing really matters. Nothing really matters to me. Okay, what's a disgusting fit? Yeah. I don't know what he is, but he's cute. He's just blobbers. Oh my, that, that's what I'm gonna call him. I'm just gonna call him blobbers. And whenever I need to draw anything with like, with like blobs, I'm just gonna draw blobbers. Just a bunch of blobby parts. Can be an ice cream cone. <laughs> Six, come on and get your kicks. If you don't need the money with a face like that, do ya? Long brown hair, she's so sweet with a get back stare. You home with me, that you're with another man. I know we ain't got. Must say before I let you get away. Yeah. I said, Are you gonna be my girl?
Pacey's mom has got it going on. Pacey's mom has got it going on. Pacey's mom has got it going on. Let's see. Where's my wife? Casey, uh, can I come over after school? Can hang around by the poop 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 business trip Business trip poop 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 I'm all grown up now, baby, can you see? Stacy's mom has got it going on. She's all I want, and I've heard it for so long. Stacy, can't you see? There's nothing to come from me. No, I might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. Has got it going on. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Daisy, can you remember when I mowed your lawn? Mowed your lawn. That came out with just a towel. Oh, 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 oh. I can tell she liked me from the way she stared. Say she stared. And now the way she said, you missed the spot over there. Over there. And I know I must have point that's a fantasy. Say, why do I thought you both could use a guy like me? Say, she's mom. It's kind of going on. It's all I wanted, and I've waited for so long. Daisy, can't you see? There's this not to go from me. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. Stacy's mom has got a going on She's all I want and I've waited for so long Stacy, can't you see? You're just not good for me I might be wrong But I'm loving Stacy's mom Stacy's mom Can't you see, girl, this not the girl for me I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom This is it, buddy This is the awesome recording studio where we're going to record our this, album It's a studio, it says it on the door It's a special <laughs> studio This is one of those lame karaoke things Okay, you want to bail? Go ahead You want Everything! Ah, cool. Sorry. No, look, dude. You gotta record other people's songs. Yeah, well, that's where a little studio engineering comes in handy, my hard rockin' amigo. Wow. Do, 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 do. This is the greatest and best song in the world. Tribute. Long time ago, me and my brother Kyle here. We was there down, down a long and lonesome road. All of a sudden, there shine the shiny demon. In the middle of the road. <laughs> and he said, Play the best song in the world, or I'll eat your soul. We and Kyle, we looked at each other. And we each said, Okay. And we played the best thing that came to our heads. Just so happened to be 
the best song in the world. It was the best song in the world. Look into my eyes and it's easy to see. On it, all thanks to when I makes free, it was destiny. In the moon, you shine, and the moon don't glow, and the planet glow. Oh. Needless to say, the thieves were stunned. They grabbed with the bucket tails, and the beast was done. They asked us, Be you angels? And we said, Nay, we are but men. Nah. This is not the greatest song in the world. Oh, yeah. This is just a tribute. You don't remember the greatest song in the world. Oh, no. This is a tribute. Oh. It's the greatest song in the world. All right. It's the greatest song in the world. All right. Let's give him wings to make him sense that he's playing. Sound anything like this. This is a trip you you gotta believe me, just wish you were there, just a matter of opinion. Good God. So um, I just came up with a different character. <laughs> so we're gonna draw a little derpy character with this little girl with a beanie. And she wears, uh, she wears a uh, uh, Santa hat because she loves Christmas, but she wears it all year round because she doesn't care what people think. So we got to come up with a name for her. Okay. So we have two main characters. We have, uh, well, obviously, besides for me, uh, my main character is one, the one and only Vicky Mayhem, which will be like a character that I draw like nonstop, she is a massive inspiration, and I will keep on drawing her even if I were not dating her. She is like the inspiration for a really cool character, and she's gonna be drawn. Period. So Vicky Mayhem, and then this could be like another character in our pinup line. So, what should we call her? I normally, normally I name them after the women that I date. But I think I gotta I gotta stray away from that. So I gotta start like doing it and then doing it for myself. <laughs> so what should we call this mystery lady? But she's gonna have her blobbers as her sidekick, so. That that's just the thing we came up with, and now it's gonna be whatever and blobbers. And blobbers will be a shapeshifter, so he will be able to change into different things because he's a blobby.
Mm-hmm. Let's see. So what should we call her? She'll have a hoodie. She just likes wearing Christmas stuff, so maybe she'll have a scarf. Even if it's, like, hot, she'll just wear scarves. And her Santa hat. Yeah, I like that. I kind of like that. And then blobbers will be just always with her. She'll be, like, petting him and stuff. So if the hand is here, right? If the hand is here, that means the wrist is here. That means that my shoulder to wrist ratio means that our shoulder has to be out here. The outside edge is right here. And then volume goes inside. So roughly around here would be the break. Yeah. Let's not overemphasize her breasts and we'll make her into a character that doesn't necessarily have to have big breasts. Just have a hoodie over her. A little body with a big baggy section to her hoodie. Let's make it into a zip-up hoodie though, because I hate pullovers. So we'll have one behind blobbers. She's petting him. And then this one, what should we make her be doing with this hand? If you're wondering where our shoulders are supposed to be, we have our connecting points with our ears into that circle that we normally draw. Boop, 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 boop. The compass would go to the edge of my shoulder here. That means that I just have to draw a matching one going to this shoulder. So that's where the edge of my shoulder would be. And then from there, I can draw the outside edge of my arm. I know that the first section has to be coming out this way. So yeah, I draw the outside edge into the volume inside. And then I can draw my front hand from here to here. It just has to add volume. I overlap it a little bit so it creates some foreshortening. Draw your hands. Mm -mm -mm. Doing whatever I need to, pointing forward or whatever. Okay. We have that. We have boobies. We have zipped. We have scarf. We have Santa hat. And we have a blobbers right here. Shape shifting blobbers. Cool. Not bad for like a quick character. Circle, make it wider a little bit for my sushi to have wider hips. And then from there, my hips come from the edges of that circle and they go down. My shorts are just, once I find the depth of my leg, I can draw a circle to give myself depth and perspective. Once I find the depth of my leg that should be matching this one, I can draw a circle at the two connecting points and then I have myself my entries for my hip bones. I leave a little space in the middle for the goodies. And then I can use any of these lines to figure out the clothing. In this case, she has like little short shorts. Let's go around. Her legs curve down, curve out, and she has tattoos, so. Her tattoos would be right here on the thigh. I was trying to draw an Ouroboros, not, not like a, not like the Sharingan. That's what I was trying to go for. I will always tattoo myself on my ladies because that's just me. <laughs> yes, it's ego. And yes, 
Yes, I am an egotistical human being. Literally, this machine runs off ego, boost, and props. If you do not know the, the combination to Rod's heart, it's not food. No, it's not sex. It's not anything like that. It's ego boosting. Ugh. Ugh. There's nothing better than someone boosting my ego. Because nobody ever does. <laughs> so I have to find people that do it for me. All right, that actually came out pretty cool. Not going to lie, that actually came out decent. Adding the white will complete it. Did we come up with a name for her? She'll be my number one cheerleader. Yeah, people have come and tried saying that. But then they just end up not being so. So I will believe it when I see it. <laughs> I'm just completely like jaded from like everyone always saying the same shit whenever I did them. Oh, yes, I'm so into I'm going to help. Blah, blah, blah. And, like, and then it's always like, oh, my God, you spent too much time doing this. Oh, my God, when are we going to have time to do this? Oh, my God, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, okay. So, no. <laughs> All right, what should we call her, though? Autumn? I like that. Autumn or fall? No, no. Uh, that sounds kind of good, but autumn, it doesn't... Uh, does it fit her? Does that fit her? Like, because she's trying to be, like, out of season, right? But I, I don't know if that's too close to the season. Like, autumn is right next to summer, so uh, to f winter. So I don't know if we want to, like, do that. It has to be, like, spring or something. Like, if it's going to... It has to be something completely different. Miss, Miss, Miss Tay, Greg. <laughs> no, he, he won't be a Greg. <laughs> sprinkle. I kind of like that. I, I kind of like Sprinkle. Roberto. <laughs> no, no, no. We won't be having any like boy names for her Orion to, to joy uh -huh. it's not a pencil this one this one's a sharpie one this one's just a sharpie brand peel off marker all right so becky no i know a becky i don't want i don't want something that of a girl that i know There was a time, there was a very small amount of time where I had a little character and her name was, I believe it was Sapphire, but I didn't really like the name, so I never really went through with it. And when I come up with an OG, when I come up with like a concept, it'll be there forever. So once I come up with one, it's going to be there like as my character forever. Safi and Blobby. Okay. So what would we call him? Is he just going to be Blobbers? Or Blob? We can call him B-L-O-B and come up with an her name. So, um, let's see. Liquid. Object. Blah. 
baby liquid object. Ah, oh, not blah. Blub. We'll call it bubbly. Oh, man. Bubbly liquid object. Object what? Bloop. I like that. Bloop. <laughs> bubbly liquid object bloop. Blob. Baby liquid object buddy. Oh, my God. Yes. I love that. Bubbly liquid object buddy. And she made them. There you go. Now she's a scientist. Cool. And now I have a reason to give her glasses. Yes. I like that. So now we came up with two characters. We came up with one that we can just make with circles by combining the circles and making them and finding little overlapping lines. Right? And we practice that with Mr. Blobbers or Blob. So we have that character and now we came up with another character. Cool. So uh, what would we call her though? So Blob, Becky and Blob. Not Becky though. Not I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know if I like the name uh, Becky for this character. I like the name Becky. It's not just not for this character. Sarah. No, Mistletoe. No, that's too punny. Buddy, you got out. How'd you get out? Oh, you're so cute, though. You're so cute. You're so freaking cute. You guys want to see mustache? You guys want to see my baby? Ah, it's my baby. Ah, the attack of the mustache. Ah, ah. <laughs> All right, honey. Are you gonna be good? Are you hungry? Oh, you're probably hungry, huh? That's why you escaped. Oh, I gotta cook you food. All right, so with that being said, I think I'm going to go so that I can uh, so that I can actually feed my puppy because he's obviously hungry. He escaped from his pen for a reason. And uh, I'll post the finished drawing of her tonight on Instagram. So you guys should go follow me on Instagram and I'll draw like a really cool version of her and I'll post her up there and I'll finish naming her. So if you guys want to suggest names, feel free to send me names, but I'm going to go feed my puppy because he's hungry and I love him and I uh, love you guys too. So have a lovely, lovely, lovely night. Uh, if you guys go out be safe, be careful. Um, we want to see you guys again tomorrow. Okay. So take care, everybody. You guys have a lovely time and just know that you guys are the best time of my day. Take care. Bye. Oh, mustache. Oh, so cute. Oh, so cute.